Here's a snapshot of the ISET2 microenvironment. Here's what you need to create your own ISET2 microenvironment. You will need a clear plastic container. You will need a cotton puff or cotton balls, a small piece of wood, a small plastic container, which you will freeze, a water pitcher, a green laser pointer or green laser pen, dental floss and tape, small model trees like ones you'd find in a train yard setup, toy polar bears or penguins, whichever you prefer, and water for plastic containers. Now that you've seen the snapshot and the items that you need to create your own ISET2 microenvironment, I'm going to show you a time lapse of how to build the ISET2 microenvironment. And then we'll go to the next step and talk to you about all the things that make up the microenvironment. Basically, things that ISET2 can measure from space. So now you know basically how to build the ISET2 microenvironment. And here we have it again, okay? And once again, we have the ice, which this is representing some sea ice. We have the land, land. We have some trees, we have some clouds. And of course, since we're in the Arctic, we have some polar bears. The purpose of this is to showcase, you know, what the ISET2 satellite can measure from space. So as the ISAT-2 satellite is traveling, you know, above the Earth in a near polar orbit, basically 88 degrees north, 80 degrees south around the uh, north and south pole, it's sending off laser photons, okay? So it's firing off laser photons like this 10,000 times per second, okay? And I'll teach you more about that later on in the presentation. But what I wanted to show you here with this ISAT-2 microenvironment is basically showing you the things that ISAT-2 measures, and then we're gonna use the laser to showcase exactly, you know, what the laser does and what we've been able to measure with ISAT-2. So I'm gonna fire it down onto this environment, okay? So as you can see, you know, the water is very clear, okay, very pristine. So the laser pulses actually bounce, go through the water surface, hit the bottom and back to the top, and back to the satellite. We've seen ISAT-2 measure bathymetry in areas where the water is very clear and very still. So this is representative of that. And as you know, when laser or light hits a white surface like ice and snow, okay, it has a high albedo, basically the reflectivity, the ability to reflect light. So we have this high albedo, so you can see it's reflecting pretty good. It's absorbing a little bit, you know, into the layers of the ice. But what's gonna happen here is I said two will bounce the laser photons off the surface of the ice, okay, whether it's sea ice or land ice, like the ice sheets in Greenland or Antarctica. But what it does is it bounces it off and we calculate the time it takes the laser pulses to leave the satellite, okay, and bounce off the object on Earth and come back to the satellite. With that information, we can figure out how tall things are, the height of things are on our planet. So we have the ice, we have the water, we also have trees, okay? Trees have height. There are over 3.03 .03 billion trees, a uh, trillion trees on our planet right now. And obviously I said two won't measure all of them, okay? Citizen scientists and researchers won't measure all of them, but we're making a huge dent in measuring these. But you can see here, a lot of this light, you can actually see the photon hitting it, okay? 
And it happens the same way. We calculate the time it takes the laser pulses to leave ice set two, hit the top of the tree, and then go back to the satellite again. And we can calculate how tall those trees are. Now, one of the pretty crazy obstacles here with ice set two is our clouds. As you can see here, the clouds really, really absorb the light, okay? And a lot of the light does not penetrate through the clouds into the surface of the water or to the trees, okay, or to the ice. That's a problem. And there's been lots of algorithms written to combat that issue. So, but that's one thing that I said too, you know, really doesn't like, doesn't like a lot of clouds. Really thick clouds are bad. Cirrus clouds are bad because they're made of ice crystals and that light, those photon light gets scattered. So this is once again, a simple thing to make, okay? A simple thing to make, you know, with household items or items at your local craft store, but it's just, it would be cool for classrooms or just to show people a little bit about the environment that ISAT2 can measure. And this is the ISAT2 microenvironment.